What's up guys? Welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. This is our YouTube channel and we're so glad you're here and I wanted to tell you about two things before the episode starts. Number one, I just wrote a book, Big Jesus. This is out now everywhere that books are sold and I want to invite you to go get that book, especially if you're a Gen Zer. Man, I wrote this book for you. My hopes is that as you read it, it will spark wonder uh, and fascination in your heart for who Jesus is. He's a really big, big Jesus. Go get the book. Number two, I wanted to let you know that we here at the Handlebar Podcast are completely listener funded. Uh, You may have noticed if you're listening to the podcast platform that there's no ads. Also, we haven't done a sponsor. We've just been completely listener funded. And I want to ask you if this podcast has blessed you uh, that you would consider giving. You can give on our website, which will be in the description below. You can go over there. You can donate five bucks, 10 bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever would be a blessing to you. It would definitely bless us and it would help us continue to build the platform, put more things out. We love you. We're so glad you're here. Enjoy the episode and don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to the Handlebar Podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. We have big news for today. Uh, We have a guest that we'll interview or that we'll uh, introduce in just a second. But before, we have Elissa back. Hi! It has been too long since Elissa has been at the table. I know. A whole season, almost. Uh, Almost. I'm happy to be back. We're happy to have you back. Yeah. Thanks for keeping my seat at the table. Yeah, we kept our seat at the table. (laughs) But like we said in the last uh, episode, we still don't have Rafi. We won't have Rafi at all this season. So sad. Sad. We're crying, but we're mm-hmm. excited because we have a guest Ooh. who's Jacob Coyne. Yes. yes. So welcome, Jacob. Guys, it's so good to see you guys. It's yes. It's been too long. It has been a long time. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with Jacob, Jacob uh, leads a nonprofit, correct? Called yep. Stay Here. Stay Here. He's doing big things with Stay Here. If you've ever seen the t-shirts that say Gen Z will be suicide free, I feel like that's the biggest, yeah. what, the way people are like, well, I've just seen Stay Here everywhere with those shirts. Yep. And mm-hmm. that's Jacob. He's an author, just released a book. Mm-hmm. Um, as we we're recording it, it was last week, he yep. released a book called Stay Here. We have it on our countertop mm-hmm. at home. That just we, waiting. Just who's waiting. Gonna yeah, who's going to read it first? <laughs> and um, so, man, we're so excited to have you to be Thank here with you. us in from Tennessee. Tennessee. Not Nashville. Not Nashville. Not Franklin either. See, mm. I thought it was Nashville. And then I helped you right there. I learned, yeah, that it Johnson was Johnson City, it? Tennessee. Oh, I've never East heard. Tennessee. Let's go. <laughs> East okay. Tennessee. East Side. Which Tennessee. is about two hours from Nashville. Is that right? No, it's like four hours. Four so hours. Nashville kind of looks like a gun, right? We're like at the tip of the gun. Okay. Yeah. Like we're we're kind of like North Carolina, East Virginia. Side. That's East Side. Yeah. Tennessee. Okay. The Appalachian or Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian. Yes. Something. Well, he's that. actually from Washington, as yeah. you can tell. I'm still that. getting used to this <laughs> whole thing. I don't have the accent or anything yet like that. I'm not gonna inherit hey, okay. that. I was gonna ask no. you want the accent. That's no. the question. Next time we have okay. you back, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. We'll see that. Keep me um, accountable. To we that. can help you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we are so excited to have Jacob here. Um, Okay, we're going to jump in with the question. And as you know, we normally draw (coughs) questions from a bowl. And having guests this season, we've decided to handpick questions that you guys have still submitted, um, that listeners have submitted. This one is from Fred, who's 21, from the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Uh, And before I read the question, um, I want to state that if you want to submit a question, you can do that on our website, the Handlebar Podcast. The blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the handlebarpodcast.com. You can go submit questions there. So this one was submitted by Fred21 in the United Kingdom. And I handpicked this question because I felt like this question really represented something that Jacob and his nonprofit have just spearheaded in this hour to overcome. Mm-hmm. And the question is, how do I overcome depression? There mm-hmm. are periods when su- suicidal thoughts are screaming in my head and won't leave me alone. Mm. Wow. So I want to read that one more time. The question is, how do I overcome depression? And then there's a comment to the question from Fred, who's 21 in the United Kingdom. And the comment is, there are periods when suicidal thoughts are screaming in my head and won't leave me alone. Wow. And uh, it's September right now. As we're recording this, you won't, uh, this episode won't get released until November. Um, But suicide, uh, September, sorry, is Suicide Prevention Month. That's right. So. Uh, I'm going to start our timer. So if you're not familiar with our podcast, we have a 15 minute timer that we just talk about the question before we jump into handlebars for it. Um, I'm going to start a timer and then 
Jacob, if you're down, I would love for you to start us out. Let's do it. All right. So here we go. 15 minute timer starting now. All right. So how do you overcome depression? Um, my first thought is this kid's book that I read to my kids. It's called, we're going on a bear hunt. Have you guys ever read that yes, before? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So in this story, um, this family decides for some, whatever reason to hunt for a bear. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you would yeah. ever do that as a family, but yeah, they true. do that. And they run it's into true. all these different <laughs> obstacles, like tall wavy grass, um, rivers, snow, mud, woods, a cave. That's can't go under it. Yeah. Can't go over it. You have Gotta to go, go through, through, it. through it. And that's the whole thing. If you want to overcome depression, you can't avoid it. You have to just go through wow. it. And that's biblical. In Psalm 23, David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You were because with you me. are with me. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. But we try to overcome depression by ourselves. We try to quote scripture at depression. Oh, man. Uh, we try to do all this on our own, in our own prayer closet all the time. Mm. But what I've learned with depression is if I bring people into it and God into it, especially that I can get through it. But mm-hmm. if I'm doing this on all on my own and I'm trying to get over it, get under it, trying to find my way through or away from the valley, avoiding yeah. the valley altogether, yeah. I'm never going to get through it. And there's been so many times in my life where I've tried to avoid depression. Um, my wife and I have had multiple miscarriages. Wow. We're so privileged and, and blessed to be able to have four daughters. Um, but we've had many miscarriages. And one, <clears throat> one that I could think of was in 2021 in January. We were so excited to have a, another daughter or, or son. We don't know. Um, and she has a miscarriage wow. at just a few weeks. And I was avoiding God. I was avoiding talking about it, praying about it. We're on the couch one night and she's like, let's just pray. We need to give this to Jesus. And to be honest, I'm so full of anger that we had another miscarriage and I was avoiding God. I was avoiding talking to him about it because it's heavy. It's it's hard to talk about these things that weigh us down. So Mm -hmm. she falls asleep. So I don't read the Bible. I'm scrolling on my phone on the couch and she wakes up like an hour later and she's like, Hey, you said you were going to read the Bible and pray about this. What are you doing scrolling? <laughs> and I stand the line right there <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to God. And as soon as I said that the presence of God filled the house. Wow. And I was like, I was like arrested by his presence. Whoa. And I just felt like I have the opportunity right here to either run from him or open up to him and let him into all this pain that I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. So I just cried out so loud. And I just said, I need a father so bad right now. And as soon as I said that his presence just, man, I could just feel him even right now. He he just overtook me. Wow. I Mm -hmm. wept for hours. I just told him how much it hurt, how sad I was for Mariah, for another miscarriage, for our children. I want to add to our family. I'm just letting it all out. And he's just speaking to me. I'm here. I love you. My love is stronger than death. I'm going to hold on to you through this. And then after that, it made it easier for me to talk to friends about it. So Fred was his name. Fred, of course, 21 United Kingdom. Fred, I I would (laughs) say, you know, if you want to overcome depression, don't do this alone. Give it to God, bring God into this. And there's so many times in the Christian life where Jesus promises that we might suffer through things. Um, We might suffer through human experiences like grief and loss and trauma. Mm -hmm. But time and time again, for me personally, I've overcome sadness, grief, and sorrow when I've gone through it. I've cried it out. I've talked it out. And then with the suicidal thoughts, um, I would say this. You know, Fred, if you want to live and whoever's listening, if you want to live, I'm sure if you're talking about, you know, how, how do I get these suicidal thoughts out of my mind? You don't want to take your own life. You want to live. Um, those thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah. The, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life to the full. God's never going to give you a suicidal thought. And if you want to live, you're not the one producing those thoughts. The Bro, enemy say that again. To, that is so good. God is never going to give you a suicidal He's thought. He's never going to give you a suicidal thought. He wants mm-hmm. to give you thoughts of life, life yeah. abundant. Yeah. God's mm-hmm. always filling your mind with thoughts of a rich and good future. He has mm-hmm. so many plans for you. So whenever you have negative thoughts like that, full of self-hatred or doubt or suicide or self-harm, those are never from God. 
And they're not from, <clears throat> they're not your thoughts. Those are the right. enemy's thoughts. And he's trying to put those in your mind until you agree with them. I remember hearing a preacher um, say this about thoughts like that. You have authority whether or not a bird lays a nest on your head. So one by one, a bird's going to put, you know, leaves and twigs and sticks or whatever to build a nest. And if a bird is going to build a nest on your head, you're allowing it to do that. Wow. Um, but you can always brush the stuff off and say, that's yeah. enough. You're not going to build a nest on my head. I don't want a bird nest on my head. Mm -hmm. So the enemy will come at you one by one with all these twigs, these leaves. He's trying to build a nest of this stronghold of suicide or self-hatred or whatever it may be. But wow. what, what we do is stay here. When people say, I have suicidal thoughts, we just say, let's, do you, do you want to take your own life? It's always no. So let's agree together that you want to live and let's break that thing. Yeah. yeah and I, uh... I think too, Fred, like for you to confess that there's yes. so much power in confession and in yeah. Western Christianity, we're not that great at confession, but mm -hmm. when you confess that to somebody else face to face, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to do that. Fred, thank you for doing it here. But do it, do it in the UK with your pastor, yeah. with a friend, with a family member. Hey, I have been battling thoughts of suicide. I don't want to end my life. I want to live. Can you help me to choose yeah. life every day? Can you be someone that keeps me accountable? Can you pray with me? We are so much better together. And even Yale, they just had a study about this. Really? With the power of confession um, and community, church community. Yale just proved last year that when people gather in community and around confession, church community they're talking about, the wow. suicide rates and drug abuse rates dramatically decline. Wow. So wow, that, this that's is what Yale. I would say. That was Yale had that study. Wow. Bro, I love what you're saying about, specifically in the story you shared, where you had that moment where you said, I, I don't want to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get in the presence. I don't want to talk to God, you know? Because I feel like there's such a, I don't know, maybe the word is stronghold <clears throat> over, again, I can speak mostly for the West because we live in the West, but over the young church to where I, I feel like there's few and far between people who actually admit that. Mm -hmm. Like there's almost this lie we've believed that we have to put our best foot forward, even with the Lord, mm -hmm. where I hear you say mm -hmm. that and it's like, you take your best foot and you put it backwards, mm -hmm. you know? And you're like, this is where I'm at. And yep. you said it was in that moment that God met you. And I'm just thinking about the beauty of, of, I know we did another, you know, previous episode on weakness, but, but a beauty, the beauty on allowing God to see what's really going on mm -hmm. in your heart and yeah. being real before the Lord. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know that that's been a consistent theme kind of for all of us around the table. And mm -hmm. I'm even, I'm looking at Elissa now and I know, you know, you've just yeah. processed real things with God. And yeah, it makes me think too, of like in an earlier season where my experience is, you know, God can't heal what you hide mm -hmm. and knowing that like a lot of times we hide because we don't want to feel the pain of what mm -hmm. we're yeah. thinking or experiencing. So if I deny it, if I hide it, but it's what you're saying of, I can't go around it. Like it's just going to keep showing up, you know, yeah. like I have to move through it and I have to expose that that's there. And I love too, what you were saying and the Bible is clear, like, it says, if we confess our sin one to another, that God is faithful and just to heal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so there's a lot of these things that feel so big in a moment, like 90% of the time, like it loses its complete hold when I just say yes. something. Yeah. Yeah. There are like very few times where it's like, I need to confess this. And now the other 10% is something I need to walk through. Mm -hmm. yeah. But a lot of times it's just getting it out. It completely diffuses yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. You know, where it's like, that's oh, the I just part. needed to say it. Yeah. It's just getting it out. Yeah. It's totally. just like that confession of like, because you think it's, you know, it's like, it's wrong that I'm thinking this way. So you try and convince yourself, you know, don't be wrong. Don't be wrong. Don't think this way. Don't stop thinking this way. Stop feeling this. I shouldn't feel this. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be upset at God. I shouldn't all these things. And so you keep it hidden and the enemy just has a heyday. That's how the nest is built. It's built. You know what you were saying? It's such a good analogy. analogy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I was in first John, what you just quoted, Elissa. <clears throat> and, um, Really, verse five 
through nine. I'll just read that. So it's first John one starting in verse five says, this is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you that God is light and in him, there is no darkness at all. Yeah. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so I love how it starts out right out of the gate, just saying God is light and in him, there's no darkness. And I remember the other Mm. day, Rosie was sitting, my little two and a half year old was sitting on the couch and she saw we were on a we were going to watch toy story, but there was a little like toy story short on Disney plus the like five minute episodes. Mm -hmm. And it was called toy story of terror or something. And it was the Halloween, the Halloween. Oh Mm -hmm. my gosh. We're entering into that season. Mm -hmm. So she looked at it and you could tell her eyes were drawn to it. And I was like, Oh no. And she goes, I want to watch that one. And she like all of a sudden became so weird and like, didn't even sound like herself. Yeah, I want to watch that one, mommy. She's like, I want that one. And I was like, well, and I used this verse. I said, I want to teach you a verse. You know, and she's like, no, I want to watch it. I'm like, no, it's first John one verse. I just read it five. And it says, God is light. And in him, there's no darkness. And at the moment, in the moment, she was like, this is so lame, you know, mm. but in the car later, she goes, Aaron came well, in the no, car. When I got home that oh, day, she home. said to me, daddy, God is light. Yeah. And we don't watch Toy Story and Terror. We, and we don't watch Toy we Story Terror. We don't watch Terror, the yeah. Toy Story because <laughs> yeah. God is light. And I think it's like, even when you instill that in a little child, it's so powerful. And so uh-huh. if we're mm. like, for me, it wasn't depression or suicide. It was other hidden sin, but it was darkness. Mm -hmm. All of Mm -hmm. it is darkness. All of it is the enemy's way to take us out. And Mm -hmm. I think reading the Bible is so important, but like knowing that God is light and in him, there's no darkness. So if I'm experiencing darkness, it's not of him and he wants to free me of it. And just like you guys were saying, if we go there with the Lord and confess to a friend or a mentor, the promise is that we get cleansed and healed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it yeah. could be a journey for some people. Some people, you know how you hear testimonies, but some people got free instantly right. when they, you know, encountered God, they never did a drug again. Other people had to go to rehab and either way, I think it's, it's okay that it's a journey, mm-hmm. but I think the first thing you need to do is just get it in the light. Yeah. 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 Talk about That's it. really good. Get it in the light. Really good. That is good. I think I would love, I don't know how much time is left on the timer. Let's see before we transition into the, more practical side, a few minutes. Um, but even this, I mean, we're talking depression, we're talking suicidal thoughts, but I even think under over that or under that, however you would say it, is just the mental health side. Yeah. yeah, the mental health conversation. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in the church, there's so many believers that struggle with mental health, yet I feel like there's also as equally so many believers who are afraid to admit it or talk about it, or you feel like you can't. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if any of you have thoughts on that, but I would love to talk through like, how how do you normalize confessing to mental health? I, you yeah. know, how do you normalize talking about mental health or how do you normalize that not how do you enable it not mm-hmm. how do you you know oh yeah me like, too cut the culture shame off, you mean? yeah mm-hmm. but cut the shame off to say like hey as a believer like if you're walking through like i think i've seen something on stay here where you talk about it's okay to not be okay mm-hmm. but it's not okay to stay there mm-hmm. is that how you've said yeah, it yeah, Ooh, that's yeah. maybe that's a great place for if you could talk you guys unpack have normalized that a little bit it, so how did you how did you do that yeah well we we tell churches the facts that Mental illness is almost the same statistically within Christianity that it is outside of Christianity right now in the Western world. So that's a problem because God gives us the roadmap. We're talking about it. Confession, Mm -hmm. being with each other about like, if you're dealing with something, get in community, talk about it, Mm -hmm. go to therapy, get through it with the goal of actually being healed. And that's the difference with the church is we, we need to normalize like this happens People go through human experiences. There's trauma within the church. There's mm-hmm. terrible things that happen to people within the church. Uh, that not not just that the church does to people. I'm talking about you know domestic violence or yeah. abuse or whatever. Just life, There's trials, just stuff that happens to people. And if we're just as a church expecting people to figure this out by mm-hmm. watching a YouTube video or you know having their own personal devotional time, we're missing it. We're totally missing it. Um, that's not the way the church was founded. Like wow. here in, in James 5, 16, it says, confess your sins to each other, mm-hmm. pray for each other so that you may be healed. 
the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power mm. and it produces wonderful results. Wow. Um, so and powerful. that's the earnest prayer of the person praying for you, you yeah. know? So that that's, that's how we've done it with stay here. And I just feel like I want to be someone in my personal life that I don't let my own issues catch up to me. Uh, the things I've experienced mm-hmm. in my childhood, I want to address because I don't want to see that continued and replayed mm-hmm. in my children's lives. So um, the first time I went to therapy, it was so embarrassing for me, just to be honest. Like yeah. I, I cried sitting down in the therapist's wow. office and she's like, oh my gosh, you have a lot to unpack, huh? And I was like, no, I'm actually crying because I'm a, I'm a pastor and I'm sitting in this office wow. and I'm so embarrassed that I'm here. Like wow. I should have figured this out on my own. That's that was my belief system yeah. years ago. Yeah. Like, what's wrong uh, with me? I stink at Christianity. Yeah. Wow. Because I'm in a I therapist. should know better. Yeah. I should be well, better. Wrong. Right. I should quote scripture. I should know. Like I'm right with God. I'm pure. I'm holy. What's the deal? I'm a new creation. You know, especially if you understand the finished work. Like, I think a lot of I think all of us in this room really love that theology. Like that's that's mm-hmm. the truth. That's what's really hard. Is, is knowing like, I'm a new creation in Christ. Why am I dealing with this stuff? Yeah, it's Why the gap. gap. Totally. Yeah. So that mm-hmm. was huge for me. And I, you have to make decisions for yourself too. Like going back to the miscarriage story, um, I was supposed to officiate a miscarriage memorial service at my church two months later. And um, nothing against the, you know, the staff. It was a huge church, a lot of stuff going on. Nobody recognized. Maybe Jacob and Mariah should not do this. Maybe they shouldn't officiate a memorial. Maybe they should be sitting in the pews at this memorial because wow. they just lost a child. But two days before the memorial, I called the staff and I'm crying. I'm like, I can't do this. I cannot officiate this thing. I'm going to go to therapy. I'm, so I'm out. I'm done. Yeah. Like, oh, I need what help. a powerful thing to say and do. It was mm-hmm. so good. And that's, that's what changed everything for me uh, is just realizing like, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. It, it's so biblical to ask for help. It doesn't yeah. mean you're weak. Yeah. That's strong yeah. to yeah. speak out and ask for help. So practically we need to create more spaces for that. And I'm not talking about just like altar calls right. uh, with loud music in the background, come to the front and pray with somebody. Right. So much happens at the altar but we need to create more spaces for people to confess and actually talk about what they're going through. Yeah. So that's where healing really comes. Okay. Before we jump into handlebars, would you want to share a testimony real quick from either your book or just, a, I know you have thousands of testimonies of people who've wanted to commit suicide and then met the Lord and got free. And I think it'd be cool to share one of those. Yeah. Just because in Revelation nineteen ten it says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I believe if you're listening to this and you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, yes. it's going to give you hope. Yeah. That's really yeah, good. Last year, um, there was a young teenager named Nicole. Mm-hmm. She lives here in Dallas. And this is so crazy. So she was going to end her life on July 13th, last year, 2022. And she's on TikTok the day she's going to end her life, like minutes before. So she had like all these plans. A lot of times when people are going to end their life, they have kind of like, well, maybe there's going to be a sign for me to not do this. Well, that's crazy. You know, maybe if I text a friend and they say a certain thing, then I won't do it. Well, she had a lot of those things, uh, but nothing happened. So she was ready to do it. She was in her room. She's all alone. She had everything set up to end her life minutes away. And she just decides... I want to open up TikTok and maybe find a funny video because I'm so anxious to do this. I just want to like laugh. Maybe there's a sign on TikTok, but I'm going to just like look really quick. So usually like when you open up TikTok, there's an ad or something like that. The first thing she sees on her For You page is me. And I'm talking about the love of Jesus and how he can snatch you out of the fire or something like that. Oh my goodness. She freaks out. She puts the phone down (laughs) and she removes everything she was going to use to to uh, end her life in her room. And she decides, I want to live and I want to follow Jesus. Like, this is crazy. I feel something here. So (laughs) she goes on the video that she saw. I say, if you encountered Jesus here, please DM me on Instagram. 
So she then goes to my Instagram and she sees that I'm speaking at Gateway Student Conference here in that Dallas week. No wow. Way. So she goes to the conference. She runs down. I, I do a suicide prevention session. Then I preach that night. But for the breakout session, she runs to me. She hugs me and she's like, you saved my life just Ooh. two days ago. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? And she tells me the whole story. So Nicole is on fire for Jesus right now. She serves at Gateway. She, oh I think she's, uh, she wants to be a missionary. She's on the media team at Gateway for the youth. And she's burning wow. for the Lord. Oh, there's wow. so many stories like that of like a, a stinking video, like a video of, of me saying, please don't end your life. If you're thinking about ending your life, please don't do it. This is your sign to live. Wow. And that's how, that's how easy it can be to stop mm. a suicide. People are looking- Desperate. Yeah. yeah, looking for hope. Wow, wow, that's so powerful. <sighs> wow. I want to say, you know, Jacob did not ask me to do this, but there are many testimonies in his book. Stay here; you can grab his book. I know because we read a couple yeah. of them ourselves. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. There's one about the dried flowers. I'm not oh, going to talk about Claire, it on here yeah. no, so that you go get the book so get and read the testimony <laughs> about the dried flowers. So it good. will make you weep. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, let's jump into handlebars for this conversation. Um, Okay, if, you know, for Fred or someone that has similar thoughts to Fred standing in front of you, or if you could tell anyone who is struggling with mental health or depression or having suicidal thoughts, what are handlebars? Yeah, just quick yeah. rapid fire handlebars. Mine, I'm just going to say, tell someone. Really yeah. simple. Start there. I wrote that mm-hmm. one down too. Yeah. Mm. And I think too, some people, I've heard some people come up to me and be like, do you think I'm really suicidal or I'm just, I would say if you have a plan in your mind, you really need to tell somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Yeah. Tell somebody. I'm just yeah. going to keep it that simple. Yeah. That's number one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Tell yeah. Someone. Completely somebody agree. Else. Yeah. Tell somebody. Um, number two, there is free resources. I think that's the biggest issue is um, if you're feeling that you're thinking, shoot, like I don't have money to go to therapy or whatever, but there are so many free resources, even on our website, www.stayhere.live. We have free therapy that you can sign up for. Wow. Christian therapy that you can sign up for. And I want want to say with you saying that, that there is nothing wrong with doing therapy and counseling. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, Sir Beth and I do marriage counseling to Mm -hmm. all the listeners out there. We have an amazing (laughs) marriage and to have that, we have to do marriage counseling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to, I want to tell you if you, there's any shame you have felt around counseling, man, there is no shame. There's mm-hmm. no condemnation for those who are go now in up. Christ Jesus. I have a therapy session tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. So I, I want to say it, whether it's mar- marriage counseling or inner healing or personal counseling or yeah. what, you know, Jacob's talking about here, therapy, like, man, let it be a handlebar for you. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. And then. You know, you, you've just got to stay consistent with community. You've got to fight mm. for yourself too, you know? Um, mm. If you really want to overcome depression or suicidal thoughts, you you are responsible to get yourself into the doors of the church mm. and then to talk to somebody about yeah. it. Um, it it's, it's rare for someone to reach out to you because we live in such a busy culture. So you also... You got to put Reach in out. some of that, some of that work as well, and yeah. find somebody to talk to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the church is the safest place for you to go to. Yes, so mm-hmm. it's so good. I mean, yeah, that's that. <laughs> I want to handle bar was tell tell, tell someone, someone safe. All yeah. of us had the yeah. same. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll end with this handlebar. Um, it's to sing. What I wrote down is sing slash worship. Mm. Don't stop singing. And I want to say the Psalms are threaded with David being honest and real of his emotions. But specifically in Psalm 13, it says this, it says, how long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, Mm. with sorrow in my heart? Every day I have it. How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord, my God, restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. Wow. And it's just, so a, it's, just with it. it's just an Everyone intense song, knows. but he ends the psalm with mm. singing, but I will sing to the Lord because he is good. And wow. I remember there was a season in my life where I was stro- really struggling with depression. And I heard the Lord say this phrase to me. He said, Aaron, you can't afford to stop singing. Wow. And I want to tell you, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, man, put on a worship song, put on an <coughs> instrumental, do something, but open your mouth and sing. Watch what singing to the Lord will do to your heart. Mm. 
And I want to declare to you what I felt the Lord declared to me. This was uh, a couple years ago, but that you can't afford to stop singing. And so mm. that's my handlebar is to sing and to worship the Lord, sing to the Lord and worship. So that's good. That's this episode. We love you. Jacob, will you end by praying for anyone who's yes. listening yeah. that's how we'll in this episode? Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everyone listening to this. Lord, I pray that you would touch them like you touched me in my lowest place when I was in the darkness, when I even was telling you and my wife out loud, I don't want to pray. I don't want to read the Bible. If there are people here that are tired, um, they're weary, Lord, I pray that you would lift them up, Lord, even when they're not calling on your name, even when they're not searching for you or seeking for you, you pursue us, you seek us out, God. And I thank you that you find us, Lord. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I pray that you would find those who are listening to this right now that are in a dark place of depression, of anxiety, of suicidal thoughts. And I pray that you would rescue them from that pit, Lord God. You are so faithful to walk us through that valley of the shadow of death. Lord, I pray that you'd remove the fear of it, God, because mm-hmm. you always are with us and you always prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies, Lord. So I pray in Jesus' name for those here listening that you would remove every scheme and attack of the enemy mm-hmm. that's been coming against them, all those lying thoughts. And I pray that they would hear your voice of truth, mm-hmm. that they are destined to live and yes. not die. And mm-hmm. they will tell of the works of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Hi, I'm Maggie Verlander. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm a listener of the Handlebar podcast. One thing I love about the podcast is how real it feels to me. I feel like every time I listen, it speaks into a lot of topics that I don't hear from a lot of other podcasts. And so every time I just am reminded how authentic it feels to me. Um, And so if you love this podcast too, you should like and subscribe and send it to a friend, your family, your crush, all the people. (laughs) That's it. Wait, no, no, no. Actually, I want to hear you that part. Yeah, because I think...